Hello and welcome to the Lake Mead Hoover Dam update for February 2024. The water level at the Lake Mead Reservoir is currently 1,075 feet 2 inches. That's an increase of 4 feet 5 inches from our last update. In fact, the water level has not been this high since May 2021. The current water level is 125 feet above minimum power pool and 144 feet below full pool. Hello and welcome to Time Bomb. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the latest water level forecasts that were released by the Bureau of Reclamation on February 16th. Although the water elevation in Lake Mead has been on an upswing for over two months now, how will water levels look later this summer? After that, we'll check on the status of the post-2026 rules that are currently being negotiated by the seven Colorado River Basin states. Negotiators have until the end of March to deliver a plan or Reclamation will implement their own set of rules. Time is running out. Let's see if they're making any progress. But before we get to all of that, let's start by reviewing Lake Mead's current water level statistics. A recent series of atmospheric rivers dumped massive amounts of rain in California. Have these storms helped water levels at Lake Mead? You're about to find out. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Tell me how I'm doing in the comments section. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. Lake Mead is starting out the 2024 water year with substantial gains in water level. But even though the lake has risen to 1,075 feet, the elevation is still below the 1,153-foot average elevation for mid-February. The highest water level at Lake Mead was recorded on July 24, 1983, at 1,225 feet. The record low elevation was set on July 28, 2022, when the water level dropped to just 1,040 feet, 7 inches. Lake Mead's full pool capacity is 28.2 million acre-feet. The average capacity for this state is 18,064,000 acre-feet. The current capacity of the Lake Mead Reservoir is 9,617,000 acre-feet, which is 53.2% of the average capacity for this state. The record low was set in July of 2022, when the capacity dropped to 7,018,000 acre-feet. Even with a terrific start to the water year, the Lake Mead Reservoir is only at 36.8% of its full pool capacity. As I mentioned earlier, water levels at Lake Mead have increased over 4 feet since our last update in January. Here is a chart of the 2024 water year, which began on October 1, 2023. As you can see, the water level started to increase dramatically on December 1st, and that water level continues to increase today. In fact, the reservoir is gaining between 10 and 18,000 acre feet per day. In the January Lake Mead update, I spoke about how unusual it is for Lake Mead to gain this much water in the winter season. The reason for these unusual gains is not only related to winter storms and atmospheric rivers. You see, Lake Mead is managed hand-in-hand -hand with Lake Powell, the very large reservoir that is located just upstream from Lake Mead. These two reservoirs are the largest in the United States. And the current rules that govern the Colorado River, the 2007 Interim Guidelines, have effectively linked operations of these two reservoirs together. So if less water is in Lake Mead, then more water is released from Lake Powell. So until these rules are changed, when I report on the status of Lake Mead, I will also report on the status of Lake Powell and the status of the Colorado River in its entirety. This is a chart of Lake Powell's water elevation for the 2024 water year. Since the beginning of the water year on October 1st, 2023, Lake Powell has lost 10 feet in elevation or 744,000 acre feet. During this same time, the downstream reservoir, Lake Mead, has gained about 9.5 feet or 746,000 acre feet of water. That means all of the water level gains in Lake Mead were a direct result of water level declines from Lake Powell. So I'll say it again, while the major news outlets keep telling you Lake Mead is making terrific gains, they are not giving you the entire story. But here at Time Bomb, I dig deeper. I show you the big picture, the true picture. If you find this information useful, please hit that thanks button and leave me a tip. I really appreciate it. 
Now let's take a look at the entire Colorado River system. This is a chart of the capacity of all of the reservoirs along the Colorado River for the 2024 water year. At the beginning of the water year, the total system storage capacity was at 25,259,000 acre feet. Today, the capacity has declined to 24,973,000 acre feet. That's a loss of 286,000 acre feet of water so far this year. Now, it's important to remember that most of the precipitation that arrives in the upper Colorado River Basin at this time of year comes in the form of snow. That water will remain trapped, frozen in the snow until temperatures rise in April and May, and the snow melt and resulting runoff begins to fill our reservoirs. So to complete our Lake Mead update, we should also take a look at the snowpack so we have a complete understanding of the situation. This is a chart of the snowpack of the Upper Colorado River Basin for the 2024 water year. The snowpack has been trending along with the median snowpack line all winter. Today, the snowpack, measured in snow water equivalent, or the number of inches of water stored in the snow, is at 98% of median for this time of year. That's 63% of the median peak snowpack that falls around April 12th. We have just under two months left in the season, so there's still plenty of time for the snowpack to meet and even exceed the median peak. This is great news. With a snowpack like this, we can expect to see solid increases in water levels in the reservoirs when the snow melts later this year. So let's recap. Lake Mead's water level has increased, but that's at the expense of Lake Powell. The entire Colorado River system has lost 286,000 acre feet, but the snowpack is looking pretty good. According to these numbers, Lake Mead should have a pretty good year in regards to water level increases. Unfortunately, the Bureau of Reclamation does not see it that way. Let's check out their forecasts. Every month, the Bureau of Reclamation releases a report called the 24-month study. This report contains a forecast predicting the likely water levels in Lake Mead for the next 24 months. I'll put a link to the latest report in the video description if you'd like to take a look. This latest report from the Bureau forecasts that Lake Mead's water level will reach its highest point at the end of February, reaching an elevation of 1,076 feet. That's about one foot above the current water level. Following this peak, the report indicates a decrease in water levels until the end of July, dropping to an elevation of 1,057 feet. After that, the water level is expected to stabilize, experiencing only a slight gain during next spring's snowmelt. Basically, they are predicting next, next winter to be very dry. After this, the report anticipates a further decline of water levels throughout next summer until water levels reach 1,043 feet at the end of September 2025. That's very close to the all-time low for Lake Mead when it dropped to 1,040 and a half feet back in July of 2022. This is a dire outlook for Lake Mead, and I truly hope these predictions from the Bureau of Reclamation are wrong. But the fact that the experts think that the water level will approach record lows again next year shows just how important it is to make sure the new set of rules that will govern the Colorado River address just how over-allocated the river actually is. The Colorado River is currently managed by a set of guidelines called the 2007 Interim Guidelines for Lower Basin Shortages. These rules are set to expire at the end of 2026. Included in these guidelines are rules that state how water needs to be balanced between Lake Powell and Lake Mead. If there is less water in Lake Mead, then more water needs to be released from Lake Powell. When there is overuse and drawdown in Lake Mead, Lake Powell gets drawn down as well. This rebalancing of water between the two reservoirs does absolutely nothing to address the fact that the Colorado River is simply overallocated. The amount of water that flows into the river every year is almost always less than the amount of water that is consumed from the river every year by the lower basin states of California, Arizona, and Nevada. In creating the new set of guidelines called the Post-2026 Operations, 
It looks like negotiators will make adjustments so that the amount of water allocated to each state will be based on how much water actually flows into the river. This would be a giant step forward from the current set of rules. These new guidelines may also include other factors, such as the loss of water due to evaporation. On February 8th, the Bureau of Reclamation released a report related to Colorado River evaporation. Again, I'll put a link to this report in the video description. The report states that approximately 1.3 million acre feet of losses occur annually along the lower Colorado River mainstream due to evaporation. This is far more than was expected. A loss of 1.3 million acre feet represents almost 9% of the Colorado River's total annual allocation. This huge loss of water due to evaporation also needs to be included in the post-2026 rules. Negotiations are ongoing, and all of this is speculation at this point. We will not know anything for sure until the end of March when negotiations are complete. Even then, the Bureau of Reclamation can still adjust the rules before a final plan is put into place. Well, that's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, please check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.